Hey guys, we at TFL would be completely lost without our friends at Onyx Off-Road. Click on the link below to learn more. Yep. Welcome to the very, very wet but fun 2023 Overland Expo West. Nathan, what up? Yeah, check it out. This is a global expedition vehicle, smaller, uh, <laughs> international. I mean, driving Wait, this thing, you're 10 feet off the ground. Can you come, can you walk up to this truck? Yeah, you want to scale? scale? Okay, I'm six for foot scale. one. When I'm not slouching. So there's Nathan, and the door of the of the cab. Yeah, is way up there. Now, by the way, earlier they had people who were partying up there on the third story. <laughs> third story. Third story. <laughs> So is this one story and then it raises and you got a second one and then a third one on top? Have uh, a look on the other side. You'll be able to tell. Probably. Yep. Probably. So these are the type of vehicles that, of course, show up here. We love this event, don't we? We do indeed. It is raining right now. We're going to take you for a tour around here. So we're going to leave this vehicle, which I'm really hoping Roman will give us a budget to get one of these, you know, because there's it's so only, much we can do with it. It's only two million. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. I, I want to point something else. Okay. It, it, it has rear steer. Uh, the rear axle steers. Now the real question is, will Mr. Truck freak out when he sees that and be able to figure out how it works, whether it's using what, Delphi or something like that? Delco? Wow. Anyways, so this is extreme. I mean, so, but in the, on this show, we, let's walk around. And it's been raining for what, five hours? Uh, pretty much, yeah, all day. Yeah, uh, we're we're the, completely drenched. But we want to show you guys what's happening here um, at the show. For example, immediately, something, uh, hey, what up? Hey guys. Um, Something very manageable here, which is the Polaris Expedition. Yeah, yeah, real bummer that we get a chance to drive one of those. But check it out. There's our buddies over at Fox. Yep. And we there. actually had an opportunity to hang out. We're going to hang out with them again later on. Wait, wait. Let, let's walk over here because uh, something uh, something that kind of belongs to us. Actually, uh, does belong to us. Kind of. Of course, it does. There it is. He's our trail hunter. Ah, trail, uh, trail hound. He's here in the Fox booth because, Nathan, you were involved with this, right? Yes, I was indeed. So, uh, yeah, we recently just did this bumper, or had this bumper done, I should say. And among other things, we were actually kind of hoping it would level things out. But yeah, it, maybe it did a little bit, but not entirely. But so, yeah. of course, we used the BDS lift, Fox shocks, Fox uh, 2.5 performance system. We have LU cabin on the back, of course, AEV bumpers. And if we had any sense, we'd be inside the alley cab right now. But all right, no, we're just Should hanging we, out here. Let's let's keep going this way. Sorry, I'm, okay. I've been keeping redirecting you, but that's all right. I'm just I'm just like a, I'm seeing squirrels. <laughs> that's quite all right. Let's just uh, steer around. One of the things that's ironic is that I have an absolutely outstanding poncho back at the hotel. Yes, yes. We don't. We just don't have it yeah. here. We. It was so shiny we it and here? sunny this morning, and there was no rain forecast and then five hours of it just dumped so this show is probably bigger than ever we've been what? coming here for what almost 10 years yeah uh, it's for quite some time and not only this one but we've done um, let's see the Pacific Northwest East and, Coast uh, and uh, Mountain West and Mountain West we haven't made it to the East Coast I one. have made it to the East Coast oh you have yeah just not with TFL so further down we have Lexus, and they actually brought out an interesting vehicle as well. Yeah. Now, for those of you who are wondering, yes, Lexus doesn't exactly build overlanders, but they're familiar with the fact that people will buy the GX, especially used ones, and convert them into serious off-road capable vehicles. So, with that in mind, over the past few years, especially, they've been building some really cool concepts. Yeah, and also, you know, the new GX is coming. Yep. They finally teased it. Uh, of course, the LX is here, the new one, and the GX is coming. Could that mean that the new 4Runner could be like a year away? What do you think? Well, one would hope. I mean, considering the fact that we just had a debut of the new Toyota Tacoma. Yes. I have a feeling a lot of that's going to be featured with the new 4Runner, but I'm not sure. Oh, look at this. This is so well done. That's a Land Cruiser. Like a two-door chop, dude. Yeah, it's incredible. Let me poke inside of okay, here. Okay, you go ahead and do that. Sorry. Hey, how are, how are you? 
Excuse me, can I poke inside here just really quick? Very cool. Very compact. Nice. Yeah, nice. considering that we, we saw a three-story one, I mean, that, that was see, a very that, manageable. The three-story one, as cool as that is, is utterly useless for anything other than huge, wide areas. The yeah. whole purpose of overlanding is to be able to go to places that are hard to reach, right? Yeah. I don't but see I, how I you could do that. I think if you go to Coachella, maybe, I mean, you could... Burning Man. <laughs> yeah. Bring it. Now, this is a cool setup over here. Ooh. Nice. Love these motorcycles. Oh, you want the motorcycle? Yeah, huh? of course I do. Look at it. That's the, the only one I ever wanted. Yes. It's, kind of, it's a Soviet Ural. And it's two, a two wheel, wheel drive. drive, baby. And even I can balance on one of these. This brakes? Yeah, this is a, a true off roader. <sighs> I love it. All right, I want to visit. I think our friend uh, Jay Couch is here. He's over there somewhere, but we. Honestly, that's completely on the other side of where the entire show is. No, no, but can we see, can we just take a quick peek, please? Let's go. Okay. Look at the 80 series right there. Bam. Still, I think one of the most capable. It's got a tasteful, potential. nice lift, right? Yeah. That's pretty nice. I don't know why this guy's beating on it, but I'll figure that out later. Overland Cruisers. Sweet. Look at the bumper. Yeah. Oh, I saw him in Colorado last year, I think. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're, we're, oh, here's the dirt box overland, guys. Um, and uh, we've met uh, the couple that took this to, all the way to, I think, Alaska and beyond. Yeah, and they were actually, they camped in it, lived in it. Yes. At really cold temperatures, yep. right? Let's see if Jay's hanging around here somewhere. If he's smart, he's probably in a really warm cafe right now. Yeah, so here's, just really quickly, so uh, Couch Off-Road Engineering, of course, is known for building unimogs right yep properly there's one there's look at that one that looks familiar oh that's the one we've had but yep. he also has another company called dirt box that's right and also this really cool trailer design not that we're good thanks this really cool trailer design uh where you can kind of you know the vehicle drives on it it slides over and you can bring it anywhere and it's very lightweight. Jay actually showed us right after he was done with this, yeah. how this thing sets up and it's fully adjustable, which is super cool. And look what he's towing it with, a <laughs> RAV4 hybrid. Yeah, I don't know if I do that, but. There it is, there's of course his Unimog. Let's take a quick look at, at Dirt Box. And look at this. There's an oven, kind of a field field cooking setup. Yeah, I don't think that's part of their repertoire. There you go. Ah, there. Look, I mean, Jay puts his machines to the ultimate test. Uh, he's got a suspension system on this Gladiator. The door box is the build out with a tent on top of it. And uh, yeah, really tough and kind of modular system where you can kind of mount almost anything to this. Very nice. Yep, let's head this way. Yep. Yeah, Jay's not here right now. Who knows, he's probably Baja or something like that fishing. Yeah. Is it raining harder now? Maybe, let's okay. just go, keep on going. He also has that uh, Tundra build out, which is pretty cool. Nice. All right, let's go. If we wait any longer, the sky is going to open up again. Yeah, earlier, I mean, it was thunder and lightning and really heavy rain. Yes. So this is as nice as it's been for the past five hours. And so we're just going to have to push through, guys. And Hopefully. we also want you to uh, see this because it's happening, you know, this weekend when we're publishing this video. Right. And you're seeing the latest and the greatest machinery, right? That is correct. So we're about to go into the actual event. So you guys can really have a look. Here we go. And of course we have many, many partners and friends that we work with. Yep. Uh, we already showed you our project truck, but it doesn't stop there, right? Oh, no, 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 it doesn't. As a matter of fact, both Andre and I are here 
from two different automakers that actually brought us here for different reasons. I'm here with Honda and Andre's here with Toyota. Yep. Andre, why are you here with Toyota? Well, because they're unveiling, and we have a separate video for this, they're unveiling their all new 2024 Tacoma, and specifically here at this event, the TRD Pre-Runner. Right, and the Pre-Runner was something that you did not see when you were in uh, Hawaii, am I correct? Right. And the Pre-Runner used to exist, right? Yep. And it went away for a little bit, and now it's back. Correct the mundo. So we're just gonna make a quick little jog to the left and then head down this aisleway. And yeah. this is quite interesting because I see some electric trucks here. Yep. In fact, that looks, does that look lifted to you? It almost does. Wow. So they have an R1S and this is from, this is an Optima, I think, booth. Maybe they only power them with Optima batteries. I, there you I, I'm guessing, no, they probably But look, look at these tires, dude. So this is a pretty uh, beefy BFG all-terrain TAKO2. Let me look at the sizing. 295, 65, R20. These look like at least 35s, dude. They look even bigger to me, the, but they, just because of the way it fits beefy. in the, Yeah, they look really beefy inside the uh, wheel well. Yeah. So, of course, this is kind of the next frontier yeah look at this a lithium power station there you go Ooh, that is built to charge a vehicle in the rough but then again do you tow it and then charge hey hey how are you guys can you tell us a little bit about this well this is a really cool truck this is his is this yours it is a cool truck what kind of tires you got i mean is it has a slightly bigger tire yeah and they're round oh yeah. Not square? No, not. No. Okay. We tried that. It didn't work. Too. Can you tell us a little bit about the trailer here? Sure. This is the Optima Power Station. We built this um, in conjunction with the upgrades on the vehicles. But one of the biggest issues that we find is people have a lot of range anxiety, especially yeah. when they say, well, you're going to take your Rivian off road. Where are you going to get power? Right. So we tow our fuel station with us. And it's got a little roof. Is that solar panel? Solar panel. Yeah. Can I stand underneath it because it's raining? Can I be underneath sure. it because it's sure. raining? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So how much energy? So this is has this, this has uh, 55 kilowatts of kilowatt hours lithium power. Nice. So and the Rivians have 130 kilowatt pack. So this will charge almost half of a Rivian fuel tank. Okay. But typically, we kind of use it to power the campsite, and then anytime you're off-roading, you, you come back to camp. If you just don't have enough to get back into town, this gives you that emergency hookup. Yes. Very cool. Thanks Thanks for sharing that. Anytime. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you. Where are you at? We were with TFL uh, Studios. We're from Colorado. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. Sure. All right. Great Appreciate day. it. Take it easy. Okay. Let's see, keep on going. Right around the corner yes. is Honda. Now, so yeah, why are you here, Nathan? So Honda brought, well, <laughs> Honda brought <laughs> us a Honda Pilot Trail Sport, and they wanted me to overland in it leading up to this event. So what I did was I worked with Honda, put a mattress in it, yes. and I've slept in it for three nights. So you truly overlanded? Yep, I you're, did. You're not kidding, right? Which explains why I'm walking a little weird. And it has nothing to do with the vehicle. Actually, the vehicle was great. And you're going to see a couple of videos with it, specifically one showing it overlanding, going to Moab, so the Grand Canyon, here, and then probably New Mexico when we're done. Wait, is that yours, the, the blue one? Is that yours? No, mine's covered in mud and goo. Okay. And it smells like a wet shoe. <laughs> so this one, these are the ones that are on display. And we're going to be doing another video here tomorrow where they have a display vehicle they're going to be bringing in that we're going to do a walk around with. Yeah. But uh, yeah. This I like is, this color, by the way. I, I really love it that. It is a really good color. Honda's finally figuring out that people want a little bit more jazz with their 4x4 or their off-roader, and they want cool colors. But you also have... That's a real skid plate down there, way in there. But And the recovery uh, point, too. Yeah, but it's way in there. Yes. And once again, I actually have first-hand experience with that. Just one second. Okay. So, 
Another thing that I have first hand experience with yes. is that the air intake is way up here, and that's really important if you go into water. <laughs> Are you foreshadowing something in I your am video? Indeed. I am indeed. Okay. Um, so well, here are friends at AEV. Exactly. So AEV, actually, we were, we were talking to Nate earlier. Uh, he may be there, and he was the guy who worked with us on our Trailhound project, replacing the front oh, bumper. Yeah. This is oh. a beefy truck, dude. Oh, this is what I wanted Trailhound to look like. I mean, we could get there eventually. Oh. All we have to do is scallop oh. a little bit, scalloping. Manly. Um, this is their prospector. Now this is the newest one. They actually had uh, on the previous generation, they had a project similar to this. Yeah. So they have this bed. The thing about this bed is that if you're serious about actually hauling stuff and accessing stuff, this is to me like the ultimate because all, all three sides can go down, one side, whatever. And then it's very lightweight because it's main, mainly aluminum. Yes. Uh, very cool stuff. And I love their wheel design. Oh. And of course, uh, well, they have been working with another manufacturer. So if we walk around, we will see that they're, of course, working with GM. That's so right. So we have a Chevy a ZR2 Bison. We recently actually had this in Colorado. Yeah, well, we owned one. Um, well, we didn't own the bison, the bison. We had the but ZR2. the ZR2, yeah. Yeah, so the Bison takes it up a, a step in terms of extra armor. It's still the same vehicle underneath, but they add Front bumper, rear bumper, wheels, I think. Wheels, right? Yes. Uh, skid plates. And, and of course, a couple touches inside. A couple touches, yeah. yeah. But for the most part, yeah, they. if you want a heavily armored vehicle for off-roading, that's yeah. kind of where they are. Okay. All right, let's continue. There's Nate, right? Hey, Nate. Hey. Hey. What up? We're just walking around. Yeah, we're shooting this live and sending it directly to your employees. <laughs> just so you know. Say nothing mad. See ya. But now this, Gen oh, yeah. C, of course, is not going to miss out on the action, right? And this is no. their latest AT4X AV edition as well. That's right. It's interesting to see that uh, GMC and Chevy are, are doing similar things, but not exactly the same thing, which I kind of dig. Ooh, look at this. Oh. Yes. Andre, you could have had one of these. I did not get it. No. Uh, I got a Colorado. I know. Look, this shows uh, a few accessories. For example, rock slider with detachable steps. Oh, they so are detachable. Can, yeah, because these kind of hang down a little bit, uh -huh. but they don't have to hang down. Well, one of my Jeep friends says everything's detachable, if you oh, think about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you Sorry. have a knife or a saw. No, you know, if you drive the right way. There you yeah, go. Those DSSVs. DSSVs. You know, maybe I could take this off of here and mm. put it on my truck. Would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd fit perfectly, wouldn't it? So here mm. we... Are you just thinking out loud because you're alarming some of the people who are hired by GMC to represent the vehicle? I'm going to speak louder <laughs> so they can hear me. <laughs> just, just warning you. Uh, okay. Here's, we have the Hummer EV SUV. Yep. I just wish they can start producing them, Nathan, and actually get them to the people. Yeah, or perhaps making them somewhat affordable and getting them to the people. Or yeah. lighter and getting them to the but people. But they put a true beadlock capable ring on this, so they're kind of showing that they're not kidding around. Ooh, a beefy tire. Yeah. And of course, a tent system on top I, as you well. Know, I, I'll say it again, is even though I'm not thrilled with these things, I, I love the way they look. They're just fantastic to look at. but. All right, let's continue. Let's, let's keep going. This way. Yep. And so... In, over there's a lot of motorcycle stuff over there, and we'll see it better. Well, we Case is not way. here, so... And Alex I, isn't here either. Alex is not here either. So in previous year, this is Fort Tuthill here in Flagstaff, mm -hmm. Arizona. Yeah. And it used to be all dirt, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And they paved a lot of this, which kind of changed the vibe a little bit because it's a little bit less dust. Well, it's raining also. Yeah, but some of the areas we've been into have been really, really gooey. Yeah, if you look down there, you could clearly see side-by-sides, ATVs, and more importantly, motorcycles. Yeah, there you have it. But we're going to just kind of skip yeah, let's, by that let's one focus, and keep on going. Let's focus so much on, to see on big machinery, because this is what you and I kind of specialize in. Indeed it is. So, I wanted to show you guys. Here we go. Oh, here's, this might look here's familiar Ram. Too. Yeah. Now, their pavilion is much smaller than it was a couple years ago. Well, you know what? They're, they don't have quite as much new stuff. Although, That's ooh. exactly what I want to show you. Ooh. 
So just so you guys know, Andre flew in this morning from Hawaii on a red eye to Arizona. Yes. And then he took a ride from Phoenix to here. I Meanwhile, couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. No, you couldn't wait. Meanwhile, I was walking around the place kind of checking it out. This caught my eye. Well, I think this is a SEMA, one of their SEMA concepts, right? <laughs> Agreed. Rampack. Rampack. I love this because this, this kind of opens up. I don't know. If, no, this is locked. Is it locked? Oh. Locked. Nothing's locked to Nathan. So they use the RAM box and then they extend it upwards. Dude, this, this needs to be in production now. It's so cool. Like right now. Yeah, it, you could tell by feeling it that this is not quite production, but also, it feels close. Also, this needs to be in production right now. This is basically a way to clamp different materials or if you're working on something and making your tailgate into really a bench. Look at this, they got millimeters too, Andre. Millimeters for me? Yeah, for you. Also uh, water storage. Well, that's exactly what that's for. Yeah. So let's come, keep on going. Look at that T-Rex. Yeah. With matching motorcycles. So if you wanted motorcycles, finally you get motorcycles. Yeah, well, here's what's important. These are actually Ram motorcycles. No, they're not the KTM. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're matching this TRX. Isn't that cool? Look at that. I mean, that's, you couldn't even, wow, that is just a really cool motif they got going there. So this is another kind of a concept vehicle from them yeah. because it's rolling on 37. I think what Ram did, uh, they saw the Raptor R on 37s mm -hmm. and they said, well, how about this? Well, it's just a regular Raptor 37. Yes. Yeah. And, and they should, they really should be doing that, frankly. Yeah. It looks really good. So I've, here's what I, I've noticed. Uh. So there are some, several prototypes from Ford running around. Yeah. Uh, camouflage. Uh, we've seen, you know, GM unveil recently several different off-road trucks. Indeed. And I think Ram needs to freshen up at least maybe their powertrains a little bit and offer more choices, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, ha I have a couple theories about that, but they're just theories. Some of that has to do with the fact that with Stellantis, they're just trying what they can to maintain profitability without having to dive too much into R&D because they've already produced an electric truck and that's probably costing And they're them working on that too. Very, yeah. very expensive. By the way, what this is is a heavy duty Rebel. Yes. Next to a light duty Rebel. Yeah, you've driven the heavy duty yes. recently. Yes, yeah, we, we recently had this at our office and we put it through a battery of tests. Yeah. Um, and this is, it combines a stylish design with a tough off-road capability but I think they could have gone further. They could have gone through, but, but I think that there's this thing of a balance because you already have the power wagon, right? So how far do you go with this before well, you're in the power you wagon? You turn the Rebel into a current power wagon and you can turn the power wagon into an insanely good power wagon. Here's the thing. This can be had with a diesel. Yes. Whereas in the power wagon cannot. You're That's right. where the big deal but, is. But there's also now the heavy duty bison. Right. And of that heavy duty GMC where we saw. So there's stuff over here. Yeah, it's ah. a hard right now to be in Oh, Tommy would be happy to uh, see this. Well, not just Tommy, the other boys too. Alex and uh, Case are getting into this. There you go, 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 go. Ooh, it's wet. Uh, it on it. So back up a half tire. It's 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 difficult to modulate, right? Pardon? Difficult to modulate. It's just on your finger. It's actually really uh, sensitive. Ooh. See. Super see, sensitive, I mean, to be honest with you. see how really see how smooth he backed up? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's really smooth. See, I would use full power so, and launch it. Time. Come on, kid. Full power. Burn! Go! It said slick, dude. It's slick. Ah. Very cool. So this is one of the things they have here. It's a really cool off-road course, and it's mixed in with some product. And see, that's what would have happened to me had I gone full power on it. Well, Nathan, you only have one mode. It's 11, right? Usually. Right. Come on, let's have a okay. look. I, by the way, I noticed these before. I saw these, I think I saw these at SEMA, and I really like them. They're, they're rigid. But Ridge is coming out with this new design, and I just really like how compact it is, and they're super powerful. I don't like like 50 lights on a vehicle. I like just a couple of small ones that can do the job, especially nowadays with the LEDs. And they're also working with manufacturers, like on production. Toyota. Yeah, with production vehicles. And you know what else the huh. new Taco has? What? Is a color changing LED. So oh. it goes from white to yellow uh, with a flip of a switch. So just to be cool, or is there a reason? 
Uh, to be cool. Uh, okay. Ah, here's Tommy's Whoa. zone. Oh, sweet. Anything that was built by or before either the Korean or Vietnam War, Tommy's into. Uh, and that would be these two. Dude, this is unreal. Oh, Look, Tommy's gonna lose You know, mindset. trucks used to be, you can see how narrow the track width is, right? Yeah, and that and, wasn't and the narrow tires. Either, yeah. But underneath, it's got some modern drivetrain. That, Look, that is, Fox. I think that's a pretty much an all modern platform. Yes. But they, they kind of kept the, the styling true, right? To yeah. what it was. Now, this one's interesting because there's a little bit of a mix of new and old. Yeah. Oh, what are, do they have? The divorce transfer case. Is it a, is it nah, a high boy? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, yes, it is divorced. Wow, look at me. Yes. It still uh, has to pay uh, for child support, but it is divorced. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that was pretty damn funny, Andre. That was no, a no. good joke. So the divorce transfer case is basically, it's not attached to the transmission. It's, uh, in this case, in the center of the vehicle. Right. So, and then they also call it equal length drive shafts. So there's a drive shaft going to the front and the rear. In the earlier days of off-roading, when I was a kid, I remember people talking about using those, putting them into Jeeps and some other vehicles because they were so unique and because you were able to get better articulation and whatnot. And nowadays, obviously, it's a little bit more uh, rare. But it's, it's rare. turning into a boat right now. Well, actually, it's doing pretty good staying afloat. Yeah. Let's keep on going. Hey guys. You guys make great videos on reviews. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate thank it. What's you. your uh, name? Ron. Ron, nice Ron to meet you. Channels, my wife, Marcy. Well, Marcy, always, pleasure uh, to meet you. Off road everlying camping. Yeah. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Yeah. I thank watch you. all your stuff. I'm trying to find a. If I'm trying to find a new truck or something, what's hot, what's not. So kinda, I appreciate it. I kind of look at the Dodge. I was looking at the uh, the Power Wagon. Oh yeah. I like it, but it's not diesel. No, it's not. But the Ram Rebel 2500, which just came out, is, is diesel. diesel. Well, like, yeah. you can get it as a diesel in almost everything that you get with a Power Wagon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. And then um, I like the, um, the I want to say the AEV, but I guess you don't do AEV. The oh. AEV, uh, what's it called, Prospector? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we do we AEV. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we do okay. work with AEV, actually. Okay. We just did a project with them. Okay. Yeah. So at the Fox booth, I don't know if you saw it, out the front, uh, the Ram, um, the silver truck yeah. is actually our truck that was in. Yeah, that's in our trail hunter that's on display. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you for watching. I, uh, while I was watching you, I'm like, oh shit, I know that guy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank I no, that's okay. Thank that's all right. We'll, we'll bleep it out. Yeah, we'll okay. bleep it out. Bleep it out. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, nice meeting you. you guys. Right. Thank you. The father and son, where are they? Uh, uh, one's in places. Hawaii and the other one's probably in Vegas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of Tommy. Thanks. Take care, guys. Look at this. Oh, he would go crazy. Oh, I love old Jeep Wagoneers. And this one still has, yep, it still has leaf spring suspension, but it looks like everything else underneath is new. Whoa. Oh. Dude, look at this. 350, 350 V8. I like that badge. Here, hold this. I just want to, I, now I got to look. Oh, can you, can we open it? Thanks. Sir, we're, we're watch, just doing a walk guys, around. Guys all the time. Oh, I appreciate, what's oh, your name? I appreciate Daniel. it. Daniel. Oh my goodness. This is Daniel, your this build? This is beautiful. No, it's, it's our archaic company builds. There's our CEOs, Casey Allen Wayne. Will you ask your buddy, your boss, if he'll trade this for a Hyundai Santa Cruz? Uh, I'll yeah. throw in a hundred bucks on top okay, of that. Good, good, I got a hundred bucks. Good luck on that one. Okay. Since it's got an LS wall. It's got the six liter in it. So. Oh, sick wall. Well. She, she purrs nice and good. <laughs> All right. Then maybe a Chevy Colorado. I'll think about swapping that with this. Uh, maybe, maybe the Colorado. Ah, Andre. <laughs> Just Look, think about sus it. Suspension seats, right? Everything. Whoa. Oh, this. I don't want oh. it to get too wet there. It's nice. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Thank no you for problem. showing us. Yeah. Very sweet. And this is like patina basically kind of Kind of painted on. Yeah, yeah it looks painted yeah. on. As you can tell, it's starting to actually patina. <laughs> yeah, that's you <laughs> have the real thing happening be. right uh, there. Yeah. It's starting to patina now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this thing is awesome. Thank you very much for your time. We yeah, appreciate it, man. Home. Thank you. All right, take care. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. Yeah, we have some more new stuff. Hey, look, Nissan Frontier. With an oven. I don't think this is a display model. We've actually been talking a lot about the Nissan because it's in an, an unusual place right now considering what Toyota just debuted. Yeah, and I mean, 
Mid-size truck segment is being really rejuvenated this year, and that, that's a good news. It I, is. I would say. You want to hang right or left of you? Let me let me think. Let me think. Where are we at? You know, we should. I think we should go. This Let's way go this way. And then snake around. How yeah, about that? Yeah, that sounds. I like the snaky part. So one of the things that Toyota has done is they brought in yet another four-cylinder turbo into the game. So now you've got Ford, you've got Chevy, well, General Motors, and now Toyota. Three big players. Nissan still has a V6, and only a V6. Yeah. And the only other V6 out there, I guess, technically would be the oh, Honda. the Honda Ridgeline, yes. You're not going to see that many Hondas here. Hi. Hey. Do you remember the last time we saw each other? I think so, but I... I uh, I'll tell you, 2019, it was all four of you, and I was telling you that I followed you guys, um, and I did all of the states because I saw you guys do it. Oh, and, uh, in the Jeep. Yeah. When we did it in the Jeep, yes. Yeah, I just retired it a few months ago. I put 240,000 miles on it. Oh, my wow. goodness. Wow. I'm sorry, what is your name again? I'm Philip. Philip Nathan, it's nice to meet you again. I've been following you before y'all got as big as y'all got. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for, for doing that. It. What's so your name? So we're doing the walk around of nice the show. Nice to meet you. So you're on the show. Oh, oh okay. Sorry to put you through all so, that. Thank you. So you. thank you. And um, <laughs> thank you. What do, you, do you still have oh, that? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. So if you want to you reference would, it back yeah, to it or something, uh, well, we'll see who I am. Well, we, we want to entertain growing, as yeah, much as we can. Sweet. We fight hard to make it happen. So that that trip. Did you see the new one? They have it on display right down there. I've, I've, I've I'm thinking about United it too. Yeah, my wife is going to knuckle up on my head when I tell her. I've done at least one trail in every state. That's, it's, uh, but it's just, I just did a big trip to Alaska, went across uh, Canada, and then dropped down the East Coast. If you check You've out, been everywhere, man. <laughs> well, my license plate even is everywhere. Oh, there you go. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to Chile, and I'm starting November for a year and a half plus to awesome. Uh, Chile. Wow. Awesome. I think when you met us last time in 2019, we must have had the H2. Remember, because all of yeah. us were here, and yeah. I think we drove our Hummer. Yeah. Or you drove I our drove Hummer. The, I drove the Hummer here. I have a picture of us all hugged up. But I'd have to scroll for like a half an hour. No, no, that's no, totally right. I can't do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> no that, that, yeah, it was Tommy and Roman as well. I think. All right. Yeah. It was because. At the time, I was reaching a hundred thousand. Ah. Uh -huh. And he said, when you reach a hundred thousand, contact him. He gave me his card and said he wanted to do a full blown interview and everything. Oh, okay. He's never ever contacted. Well, that, now I have your card. Yeah. I've got so his maybe card you can come desk. over on our podcast. Maybe we can talk. You know, just I would call each that. other. You know, I would and talk about love it. Love that. All right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm a. I'm, I'm a fanboy. <laughs> Same here. Sorry. I appreciate that. Well, you're both Absolutely. welcome anytime, please. It. And All reach right. out and let us know when if you can well, come by. I have his card. So just, there it is. Just go through. Don't call me. Go through the Instagram because I look at that every five okay. minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got I it. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Take See care, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Maybe I can get you on my podcast. Ooh. So check absolutely. it out. Cross promotion. Yeah. Check me say. out. All right. check We're out. not beyond that. All so right. absolutely. Thanks. Take care, guys. Wow. That was awesome. So let me hold this while you just, put your just, mic yeah, back let's on. Let's pause for a second. Okay, just let go. I got it's it. It's really. Okay, this it. is why we come here, dude. Because show, oh, thank oh, you so much. It. Appreciate it. It's because mm. everybody's so nice. The, yeah, the, super nice, and it's really cool to see where our fans are and what they're doing. Because the, remember how hard our trip was, our 2015 Jeep trip. <laughs> Motor but they've inspired, you know, this gentleman, and it's inspired, you know, many other people. Think about what that trip involved. Fifty states in one year, exactly one year. And every Monday had to have in the can another episode from another state. And not only that, but Andre and I did hey. a majority of them. Hey. Hey, Gloria. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, man. Um, and we hit every state. Um, Roman did Alaska and Hawaii. And, and a several of, states, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I'm just like, those are like the far yeah. reaching ones. Andre and I did the entire East Coast, the entire South. That was that was not easy. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't easy at but all. It was a lot of fun. I mean, in the end, looking back on it, <laughs> looking back uh, on it, it was fun. Yeah. Neither of our wives were very happy. No. Because we were gone a lot. Our kids were not happy either. Ooh, no. All right, so let's let's take a look a little bit more. So normally, when we come here, I like to kind of take the pulse and see what's the most common vehicle. We've seen a lot of Toyotas, of course, but you know, wait a minute. What is this? 
It's it's JXL. I think we've seen it before, something yeah. similar. There's like an, another foot. foot and a half. Yeah. Oh, it's more than a foot. This is yes. it's gotta be 18 inches or so. Yes. It's an is extended this the one with JL. the third row? Because there was one. But it also it. has this kind of tent built in. Yeah. Wow. So that's yeah, interesting. I, it, you know, at first I thought it was a gladiator, but it's not. No, it's not. It's not a gladiator. So yeah, I mean there are a lot Jeep is of course, huge in the community. Toyota is huge. I, I And I think we're starting to see a little bit more GM trucks as well. We are seeing more GM trucks. And if they were smart, that they would crank it up a couple notches and yeah. start doing uh, yeah, some you know, projects. Ford is back in the big way because of Bronco, I think. Yeah, but here's the crazy part. I mean, you, we see them on yes. display here and there, which is great. But Ford actually sponsoring their own builds. Haven't seen a lot of that. Not as much as I've seen with Jeep, that's for sure. I thought that they would hit and harder. Also, you know, here you saw GM had a factory booth here. Yep. Uh, Lexus had a factory booth. Toyota has one. So, and Ram has one. Ram has one. Yeah. Ford doesn't. Yeah, we, you haven't seen Ford, have you? Nope. Okay. Nope. And th that's one of the things that's kind of curious. I'm sure some of you guys are probably like, well, you know, they do other events and you're right. But this, I think, is the new this, big thing. And this, this is, is a little like, bit Mad Max-ish a little like bit. like that. Right? So just kind of very simple. You know, um, if you're not doing aluminum, aluminum is really expensive, right? Yes, it is. Uh, but steel bumpers are very heavy. That's, so this so is this kind of a compromise, I would say. It is a compromise. Uh, the only thing I would say that might be an issue for some people is that debris and all that isn't being banged away. Yes, and also your radiator may this be a really little bit exposed. exposed. Here's another look at another bumper. Now, this is much closer to what I like, personally speaking, because mm. it has this cutaway, so you have a better approach angle on your tire. Insane approach angle. Then again, you lose some approach angle up front when you have Because winch. of the winch is there. So there's always that thing you have By to... By the way, Nathan, I'm seeing a lot more come up. Yeah, you know, yeah. They kind of burst onto the scene They really here. are big. Yeah. I mean, almost every other one I'm seeing has it. Hello. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so let's snake back around yeah, because, yeah, make a left. because I, I heard there were some couple really cool builds on this other side. There's um, something you guys should know. We're only covering about, ooh. What, 40%? May, maybe 40% of this entire event. Plus, if you go just to where everybody's camping, you will see the most amazing collection of unusual, awesome off-road rigs overlanding rigs and trailers and older rigs and just simple just rigs really oh come here this is great i saw this before what <laughs> next to the dent Ooh, that's awesome <laughs> that's just a badge of honor really that's exactly it i think it, and you also put on where, where it happened nice yeah, absolutely. i think that's just i also love epic. when people put like little band-aids on their on their uh, um, dents yep andre and i think we know the owner of this mitsubishi but we're not 100 percent. so okay <laughs> we're just keep walking. Oh, look at this Tundra. Look at this bumper on this bad boy. Yeah, but once again, there's the question. Because of this, the way the chin juts out, are you gaining or losing when it comes to approach angle? Well, the tire's a little bit more exposed. Yeah. But, you I, you know, this, 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 this is point just something, is low. Yeah, and, but then you go here. This is the exact opposite. By removing all that stuff, yeah, that has huge incredible. Yeah. yeah. So that's, you know, you have to weigh that. I know people are so excited to slap on that stuff onto their vehicles and add weight and add Well, look at the tires know, on strength. this. Oh my God. <laughs> that's pretty These cool. These Mickey Thompsons are, uh, what is that, 43? No. Those look yeah. like a four. 43s. 43. 40. I, I, every show has a, what I call the common question, and as soon as you walk in my booth now, I'm just like 43. Oh, okay. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what we sell, but just the answer to the question. You it didn't it, it does answer. stand out quite a bit, though. I mean, you <laughs> saw it all the way down to the other end of the thing. I we were looking at the booth like, you're going out in front, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we build Jeep campers. Uh-huh. Okay. And you can see mild to wild. Like, we're perfectly happy on a stock Rubicon where you can go over the top of it. So what's what's the name of the company? Ursa Minor. Ursa Minor. Oh, okay. Very cool. So is the camper built into, I have a microphone here. Is it built into kind of the top of the Jeep or how does it work? It's a replacement top. Okay. So we basically take your stock top off. Ours is a bolt-on. 
So you'll remove your stock top, and this one bolts right in place. I gotcha. So no modification of the vehicle necessary. It's can stock we see holds. Can you open yeah, the door? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's made of a line across this one. And it's accessed through the interior. Ah, gotcha. So you have standing room. So from the back seat, seat, you go straight up. Yep. So you keep all your gear in the back, still cook out of the back. Sure. Um, and climb into the center. Very cool. Oh, so it's like a hatch, yeah. basically. Yeah, How much does that hatches. weigh, would you say? Uh, we net change on this camper is 150 pounds of the vehicle. Okay. So the camper's 300, you're pulling 150 off when you pull your old hard top. Gotcha, So your gotcha. net change is 300 pounds. Okay. 150 pounds new. But the answer to the meaning of life is 43. Correct. 42. Okay. That just, holds for tires. Well, it's supposed to be 42. Yeah, and Tootsie Pops. <laughs> okay, there it is. It's very universal. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, this is really, yeah, it catches your eye. It certainly does. It catches, catches your eye. We always look for something in the booth that yeah. brings in some folks. So, yeah, this one did it for us this year, for sure. Yeah. But, but, but that one over happy. there is also another example, though, right over there yeah. behind you, Andre. And look at that window, too. Yeah, that's our sliding quarter window, um, which actually you can retrofit in any stock top. Yeah, that's very, very cool. cool. Well, thank you. All right. Thank Thanks you for your time. No we worries. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming All by, guys. All right. All right. The answer cool. is 42, really, right? Yeah, it really is 40, 42. is the proper answer. If my wife heard this, she would start yelling, 42! Right? Yeah. Same with my brother. He's a Major Douglas Ad Adams fan. All right. Oop. Excuse us. Nope, sorry. All right. Some interesting electric bikes here. By the way, there's a lot more electric motorcycles and bikes um, in the area. We've noticed some tooling around. And for those of you who sell them or build them, <laughs> let us have a couple for next year. So that way, fat, lazy guys like me can actually ride around here and cover three times as much stuff. In Instead the same of 40%, amount of it would be 120%. It would be 120%, yeah. yeah. So just keep that in mind. I'm so glad that it stopped raining. <laughs> me too. We're, we're both, I mean... We're soaked, but yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it definitely... My skin is a little clammy. We're, 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 we're spoiled because Colorado, you know... It's very dry, and things you know you get wet, and it dries almost immediately, even if it's snowing. Here, it's not like that. Ooh, this is what you could do to your Colorado, brah. Oh wow. Well, not exactly. Well, something I could do, you know, something like this. A little bit more uh, articulation, a little bit more wide body stance. It's pretty cool. And of course, I could do all that too. Let's see, I think we're getting to the area where I really wanted to check out. We're getting close. Oh, okay, there's our friends over at Wolf Riggs. Oh. We promised that we'd do a walk around. Why don't should we just... We, should we stop in? Maybe we stop in and say a quick hello. Now, this guy is based in Colorado, not too far from us, actually, near Denver. Yeah. And what he's doing is taking a Humvee platform, gutting it completely. Hey, how's it going? And... Um, going all the way down to the frame. Then he builds up this RV. He actually has a shop and- And he's out of Denver. He's out of Denver. Yeah. And we might be visiting his shop soon. Uh, according to him, this thing is just actually, an utter Actually, Gio has a door open. Maybe we can walk yes, around. Actually, yeah, the interior is what's important to see. So come on, let's have a look, see. And- So it is a kind of a recycled Humvee chassis. Yeah, but, uh, but according to him, you go all the way down to the bare chassis, he actually gets, he's able to put his own VIN on it, and he produces this as an RV out of the box. And it's certified as an RV. Exactly, yeah. certified as an RV. So what we're going to do Let's is, walk inside. Excuse us, guys, I'm sorry. We're just hey. doing a little walk around here. Okay. Yes. So have a look in the inside. We'll give you a little bit more of a backstory, but... It's a little home. It's yeah. nice. Well, in the back is where the bathroom is, and there's a converted bathroom. So it actually pulls, the toilet will pull out. I'm just about 6'3", almost, and I'm just clearing the ceiling. So it's an impressive amount of space for how relatively compact this particular motorhome is with a large bed here in the front, and also super off-road capable, right? That is correct. Come on, let's let's step on these people. Okay. So, um, water on board. The water on board is a 60 gallon, and there's 25 gallons of gray water, on-demand water, 
has 800 watts of solar, 500 amps of battery storage. And what he's doing right now is he's actually converting these to Cummins diesels. He's getting rid of the old. Well, because pump. those those old engines are so under always AM general. Under, yeah. yeah, they were. Yeah, they're really underpowered. So he's putting like a seriously heavy powered powertrain in here, which is very cool. And once again, we're hopefully we're going to stop by and see his shop. Well, I want to see this thing moving. I do too, and that's why we want to go to a shop. One final component, though, price. Yes. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, I know. so at first I would say that's a lot. Yes, but... But if, if you, you look at $1 million earth roamers... Exactly. And that's what he's competing with to a certain degree. Um, and he, his whole point is to have something that's even more off-road capable. That's what he's saying. Well, because it's a little bit more compact. I Which mean, is my point. At the end of the day, these massive earth roamers and all these other Unimogs and everything else that I love well, if you're going on the trail, you're not going to fit on many. And that is the most important thing is maneuverability and capability. Oh, and the dog's wearing boots. That's yes. important, too. <laughs> Which are waterproof, and of course, our boots are not waterproof. Well, it's kind of waterproof. Kind of waterproof, although I'm definitely going to have to um, air out my feet later on. You're lucky you're not sharing a room with me. All right. Okay. This is where... I think we're going to uh, start dialing it down a little bit. And, well, this is cool. These guys, see, that's proper overlining right there. Got a little fire going, keep oh, yes. warm. But I wanted to show you over the gate. What's over there? Oh, the, the actual yes. camping as well. What you guys may not know is that at Overland Expo, at least here, there are a lot of people who actually camp out. And bring their rigs or their tents and everything else. Well, this is and not it, just a show. This is... No. And it surrounds Real. the entire perimeter. And hundreds and hundreds of people camp here. And you could clearly, like, there's a brand new Bronco over there, some really cool teardrop trailers, a variety of different setups. And, you know, it's, there's, it, it's the boondocks. There's no electricity out there. There's no sewage or anything else. Granted, everybody's close to each other. Well, you camped three days on the way here. So you were, you yeah. were immersed in this. <laughs> Yeah, so I was actually inside the vehicle. Fortunately, I had a refrigerator, and um, I, well, it, it, was, it was a little rough. The video, stay tuned for the video. Oh, look at this thing up ahead of us. There's that Rhino? black thing. No, what is that? Oh, that. That's adrenaline. Actually, he's from uh, Utah. And oh, is it, did you drive we, one of his? No. No, that's Plan B. No, but we've seen him. We've seen him. Um, at quite a few shows Holy because cow. he also uses liquid spring suspension like uh, our friends at Elevation Off Grid. Right. Finish filming? I just want to say hi. I watch oh. your videos and stuff. And oh, hi. Oh, hey. hey. Thank you very much. What's Where the name? Where are you from? Uh, uh, originally? Yeah. Uh, I'm from Russia. I'm from Moscow. Oh, dude, I thought you were from Argentina. I was just, you have an accent like, like us. I thought you were from Argentina. Kind of, so it's, kind of uh, but I'm uh, from Russia originally. From Russia? Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Me jefe is looking like a cabeza, <laughs> but, but, mucho trabajo. Mucho trabajo. Uh, uh, si, uh, and uh, mucho uh, el guapo. El guapo. Si, 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 si. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. We're, we're I said still, nice things, I swear. Oh, you said feminine. Damn it, I thought you were done. No, no, that's okay. Right. What's your name? Martin. Martin, nice Martin, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, nice, nice to meet you man. We're, we're just wrapping up this video. We're going to do a little bit more of a walk around. Thank but, you. But, for no, 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 it's a pleasure uh, meeting you, though. It's okay. It's we great. like meeting it's our okay. fans, though. It's all good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Take care. Videos and thank Are you, you in this room? Day. No, I'm a Oberland Vehicle Systems. I have a Land Cruiser 70 Series. Oh. From, is a 91. Nice. That I just built for SEMA last year. But come and check and it out. It's on display? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's on display. Okay, fantastic. Right. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll look for you. Thank take you. care. Thank you. All right, so, God, my Spanish is all broken. I, I couldn't even Did say a full sentence. Did you say that I was like dumb or something? No, I said you were handsome. Oh. And, and anybody who's watching knows I'm telling the truth. Yeah and that you were macho. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, what I was talking about with, with the liquid spring suspension, so now, it can go up and This company also, I mean, there's, uh, that work with like ambulances and first yeah, responders liquid, and- liquid suspension. Yeah. Um, just, just, just hold this for a sec. Live action, oh, live auction. 200 on this. Can we get one, please? Oh, let's start bidding. Yeah. With Roman's money. <laughs> All right. All right. Ooh, let's look at this. We need to be a little bit around this because I 
really want to check out. There's a brand new 2023 Super Duty here somewhere. Ah. And I really want to check check it out. Let's see. Oh, there's one, but it's not modified, of course. It's just rolling by. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's not what I was looking for. Uh, oh, this? Uh, no, that's not it either. Damn it. Let, let's, walk, let's walk down this area just right. a little bit more. All right. Well, guys, this is as close to live as we can get with this whole thing. So we do apologize earlier on for a slight miss with a word, but we can't really censor the people who we interview, right? No. Yeah. And this is real. Real this life. Is not. That's the whole point. But well, you can see the atmosphere here is still very, very, Eat, very Despite positive. the fact that there was a massive downpour. Now, had that not happened, there'd be 10 times the amount of people here, which there were this morning, and it would definitely be, check out the electric bike setup up there. And it definitely would be far more uh, entertaining, I think is the way to put it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Hello. Oh, is this a Super Duty? No. I'm not going to point to any more if you say no. No. Well, I'm not pointing at any more Super Duties then. But there's a Bronco. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Once again, I really think that Ford should actually establish a presence here on their own. Like a factory presence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know Ford is broke. They don't have the money to do it. They're only selling every single thing they build. And there's a backup going over a year yeah, everything on everything. Yeah, everything they design is really desired. Yep. Maverick, but... Bronco. Uh, Hybrid F-150. Is it Farley? Farley's the guy in charge? Yeah. Hey, Farley. Yes. Why aren't you here? <laughs> oh. He, yeah. might, he might show up. <laughs> He's actually right. a good guy. So, so we're kind of ending Ooh. up. What? I just like the setup on this GX. It's pure GX. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty sweet with, <laughs> a, with a spare tire. <laughs> that's really cool. I'm curious to you, you guys, before we wrap up. I have this conundrum, and that is some people are all about rooftop tents. Yes. In this organization, this public, if you turn the camera, every other vehicle has one. Yes. I'm not a big fan. And yes. reasons? I, because even though they're only like the lightest one is around 100 pounds, the heaviest one could be 1,000 pounds, it makes the vehicle a little top heavy, makes it less aerodynamic. People leave them on their vehicles when they're not using them year round. And it's just, you know, it's going to be one of those things where. Signing autographs and stuff, I don't hey, know. no, no, we're, we're live. Oh, hey, 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 yeah. hey, hey, how are you? Great job. I love all the rig stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's so fun. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so it's, it's, it's one of the things that's just kind of always bites me because I know they look cool. And I've, I've slept well, in a few. Well, there's a couple things. Let, let's just finish up here, right? Yeah. Um, there's a tent. I believe on that Bronco right there. So there's a couple things. First, there's a few ways of doing it. You can mm. put a tent on top. You can tow a trailer. You can Which build like the Wolf Rig, right? Yeah. The Humvee. You could build a camper on top of your vehicle. Or or make your vehicle the camper. Or what I discovered doing my pilot thing living in it. Yes. You can use a hotel. <laughs> and a hotel but is s- better. But still travel. Yeah, why not? Just travel to different places and stay in a hotel. I've learned that, my friend. Sorry, it's been a long couple of days. So there you have it. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this um, trip uh, around the uh, the the latest show. Yep. And we could show this big rig here. Oh, is this the one you were talking about? No. Damn it. So we'll do more videos. How about this? Uh, We'll zero in on a couple projects. Yes. Learn a little bit more about them. Indeed. Uh, And uh, thank you for joining us uh, once again at this wonderfully crazy and exciting. Overland Expo. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to come here tomorrow, and we will be here for a couple days, so yep. stay tuned. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And check out oldtfl.com for everything automotive in one place.